What's up my comic comrades? One of the things we get asked about the most is what independent comic titles would we recommend? To be clear, when we say independent comics, we're really talking about the titles that aren't being published by the two dominant publishers, DC and Marvel. Believe me when I tell you there are a ton of great titles out there, so it's hard to narrow down. But today we're gonna give you the top three current indie titles we think you should pick up right away. off the list at number three is Ice Cream Man by Image Comics. Ice Cream Man debuted in January 2018 as a monthly ongoing series and is written by W. Maxwell Prince with artist Martin Morazzo. This series is absolutely incredible. It's a horror dark comedy anthology and it does a great job at it. Being an anthology series means every story is different and doesn't follow the same characters, yet the series is loosely connected by a character called the Ice Cream Man, a mysterious, clearly otherworldly entity or evil being that enjoys bringing torment. An official quote on Image Comics website says, each installment features its own cast of strange characters dealing with their own special Sunday of suffering. And on the periphery of all of them, like the twinkly music of his colorful truck, is the Ice Cream Man, a weaver of stories, a purveyor of sweet treats. Friend, foe, god, demon. The man who, with the snap of his fingers, lickety-split, can change the course of your life forever. Come on, you can't tell me that doesn't sound interesting to you. I mean, you could, but... You guys know what I'm saying. The series is kind of like a modern day creep show, which was also an anthology horror comic series. It's essentially a must read for any horror fan, but it's blended so well with dark comedy that it's also a fun read, which is weird to say when it's dealing with very serious and dark situations. And being an anthology series, you never know what you're gonna get next. It's always a surprise and I love it. It makes it so much fun to read. You know it's gonna be some sort of horror dark comedy story, but that's it, and it's kind of awesome. Especially since the comic loosely links it all together with the ice cream man who's manipulating things behind the scenes. For instance, the first issue deals with a little boy named Byron who has a pet spider that just so happens to be a Brazilian wandering spider, the most poisonous spider in the world. It ends up biting his parents and their corpses just rot in the living room for two weeks until they're found by the police. But when the police get there, Byron thinks they're trying to take away his pet spider and runs away, only for him to get attacked in the woods by a werewolf who just so happens to be the ice cream man. Luckily, Byron's spider bites the werewolf and scares it off, and the officer takes Byron into police care. While at the end of the issue, we see the ice cream man pick up the boy's lost spider and snaps his fingers turning it into ice cream and serving it to someone saying lickety split with sharp teeth and his eyes turning yellow then issue two deals with two drug addicts or junkies as we see the couple sitting on the couch the boyfriend having od'd so his girlfriend goes out to pull one last robbery to get the fix they need so they can then move to arizona she ends up stealing the ice cream man's truck and long story short she ends up crashing into an old couple's car and holds them at gunpoint for their money she ends up panicking and accidentally shoots the old lady then runs back to her house to find the ice cream man sitting in the living room saying her boyfriend doesn't look too hot. The ice cream man offers her a drug, something more pure than pure, that would make the other stuff seem like microwave dinners. But here's the rub, he says, there's only enough for one person. As the issue ends, we see medics save the boyfriend and wake him up, and we see the girlfriend in the seat next to him having died from the ice cream man's lethal dose. See what I'm saying? The ice cream man knew what he was doing. It's a win-win for him being the evil bastard he is. If she was selfless and gave it to her boyfriend, it would have killed him. But if she was selfish like she ended up being, it would kill her. These are the kind of scenarios and such that the series focuses on. It's what makes it such a compelling series. You need to read this if you're a fan of horror, dark comedy, or just plain good comic book writing. Next up, we've got another series from Image Comics, Noctera, written by the one and only Scott Snyder with art by the great Tony S. Daniel. The first issue dropped in March of 2021, and the first arc just wrapped up with issue 11 in June of 2022. So the title's barely over a year old, but it's one of the best original sci-fi comics I've read in years. The series focuses on a girl named Val Riggs, call sign Sundog, and the series starts off with her narration explaining the big PM. She says, the stories are almost always the same. I was driving to work and suddenly the sky just went dark. I was cleaning the dishes and then darkness. It took 23 minutes for the sky to go full dark. And when it started, she was working on a picture of her adoptive parents. We find out she was born with severe cataracts causing her to be legally blind, but she finally got the surgery to fix her eyesight right before her fifth birthday. And her new family, her mom Catherine, dad Miguel, and brother Emery were there to welcome her to the real world. We then flash forward to the future where to put it simply, the world's going to crap. The sun disappeared and the sky went completely dark. Val is now what they call a ferryman, a driver who hauls people to safety bunkers in a lit up 18 wheeler. But as Val was driving people to safety, they got attacked by what they call shades. As she fights them off, she narrates, wherever you were on that first day in the big PM, by the second day, you were someplace far worse. That's when everything started changing. See, in the big PM, any living organism left unlit in the dark for more than 10 hours starts undergoing a biological transformation, changing into what we call a shade, a monstrous version of 
itself. Insects, fish, birds, everything. The infection starts in the gums, moves into the blood, the bones. If you catch it very early, dialysis can sometimes get ahead of it. If your gums have gone dark, you may be able to stop the infection with a solar lamp, halide, or xenon, but they're rare as gold. If it gets past your gums though, it's over. Human shades are the apex. They mix with nothing, live in packs have their own language. They bring down our outposts when they feel like it. You see one, it's already too late. Throughout the first issue, as we learn about the world, we also find out that her brother Emery has been infected when she checks his gums, and they're both trying to cure him before he turns into a shade. We later meet a mysterious old man and his granddaughter as they ask Sundog for a private transportation somewhere, and they're willing to pay a crap ton of money for it. So of course she agrees so she can use the money to cure her brother. In the truck, the granddaughter asks, Grandpa, do you think we're finally safe? And the old man replies, I do. There was no way for him to follow this time. He's gone. As the scene switches to the ferryman headquarters with a shadowed figure in the door. He walks up to the desk asking about the tags for the driver that just left with the old man, still completely dark with only his teeth visible. It's creepy. The lady behind the desk tells him, I'm not sure who you are, but I don't give out my driver's tags. And he responds, me, my call sign is Blacktop Bill, and I'm sure you can make an exception. Another guy steps in defending Val, but Blacktop burns his face and continues, for those asking, I don't have a problem with your friend Val. I have a problem with the old man in her truck. See, he's the man who killed the son, and we're gonna hunt him down. Seriously, what a great pitch for a story. The world goes completely dark for some reason. If you're in the dark for too long, you turn into a monster, and one man is apparently responsible for all of it. And we're not the only ones who think Noctera is awesome. It's actually being developed into a live action Netflix series by Roberto Patino, whose credits include Westworld, Sons of Anarchy, and more. He'll be on as a writer, executive producer, and showrunner for the Netflix Noctera series. It's currently in early development with renowned filmmaker James Wan's production company, Atomic Monster. I love the series, so I cannot wait to see it brought to life as a TV show. I just hope it lives up to the comics. Because if adapted well, it could be one of the best comic adaptations ever. Taking our number one spot, published by Boom Studios, written by James Tynan and drawn by Werther Del Adera, we have Something is Killing the Children, which made its debut back in September of 2019. It was originally supposed to be a five issue miniseries, but because of the overwhelming early support by fans and retailers, it was made into an ongoing series by the creative team at Boom Studios and is another indie title being made into a Netflix series with Trevor Macy and Mike Flanagan as co writers. If you've never read or heard of the series, the official synopsis breakdown from Boom Studios states When the children of Archer's Peak begin to go missing, every Everything seems hopeless. The few children that return alive have terrible stories, impossible details of terrifying creatures that live in the shadows. Their only hope is the arrival of a mysterious stranger, one who believes the children and claims to be the only adult who could see what they can see. Her name is Erica Slaughter. She kills monsters, that's all she does, and she bears the cost because it must be done. Seriously, that premise is crazy. A monster in the shadows is killing children, and a mysterious warrior arrives to hunt it despite the cost. And that's how the first issue starts off. We see a group of boys having a sleepover playing truth or dare. One of the kids named James decides truth and gets asked what's the most scared he's ever been. So he tells a story about a monster that he saw in the ravine near his house. They don't believe James's story, so he dares them all to go down to the ravine and see for themselves. And next we see him being interrogated by the police with the three other kids being dead or missing. We're then introduced to our monster killer, Erica Slaughter, who looks awesome by the way. I love that handkerchief mouth mask she wears. Very Tokyo Ghoul-like. She gets sent to Archer's Peak and finds James asking him about what he actually saw that night. But but he says he already told the cops everything. So Erica explains, I promise you, I swear on my heart, hope to die, that I'm going to believe whatever you tell me, okay? No matter how weird it is. This takes us to a flashback of that night in the ravine when they were playing truth or dare, as James is screaming in the woods looking for the others. He finally finds his friend Noah chopped in half, begging for help, with his other friends being attacked by a massive and terrifying six-limbed monster. James finishes the story and Erica thanks him, then gets on the phone and reports, it's Class E7, Archer's Peak, Wisconsin, showing she's part of a bigger organization of monster hunters. I probably don't have to elaborate on this comic much since it's already so popular, but if you're not reading it, you should get on that, like now. Especially if you're into thrillers, horror, monsters, mystery, and all around good writing. Bottom line, it's one of the best comics out right now, period. But that's just our top three. There are numerous other great stories out there, so definitely let us know what your top three indie comics would be down in the comment section. And let us know if you'd like us to make title recommendations and occasional segment on the show. And that's gonna bring today's episode episode to a close, but if you enjoyed this episode, check out this one right here. And if you like all of our content, like, subscribe, and comment, you know the deal. But other than that, I will see you all next time when I talk about all things comics. <laughs>